Welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we are looking at the seventh grade math review. This is the whole year in review, part three. So we are doing some division. So this is a division problem. We have the fraction four thirds divided by the whole number five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this instead of being what I call a double stack, I'm going to stretch this out as a division problem. And I'm going to write this 4 thirds divided by 5. Now, when I have division involving fractions, I can use the keep, change, flip method. So I'm going to take 4 thirds. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to change my division to multiplication. And I'm going to flip, which means reciprocal. I'm going to take the reciprocal of 5. Well, 5 is 5 over 1, any whole numbers over 1. So that's going to be a 1 -fifth. Now, once you keep, change, flip, we can now just multiply straight across. And we get 4 over 15. And there's our answer. So it's just 4 fifteenths. Okay, we have a similar problem down here. We have 3 and 2 thirds divided by 4 and 2 fifths. Now the problem with this division problem is we have mixed numbers, meaning a whole number and a fraction. So I'm going to use the circle trick first. So I'm going to multiply and then add. So 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. So that's 11 thirds. And then I'm dividing that by, again, I'm going to do the circle trick where you multiply and then add. So 5 times 4 is 20 plus 2 is 22 fifths. So now I have 11 thirds divided by 22 fifths. I'm going to use the same thing I did up here, which is the keep change flip. I'm going to keep the 11 thirds, the top, which is also called the numerator. And I'm going to divide it by 22 fifths. I'm going to now stretch it out to a keep, change, and I'm going to flip 22 fifths into 5 over 22, which is its reciprocal. Now I can multiply across. So I could multiply this and get 55 over 66, but I can also reduce these two. So 11 goes into itself once, and 11 goes into 22 twice. So I now can multiply the top. 1 times 5 is 5, and two, 3 times 2 is 6. So it ends up being 5, 6. So that's how you handle those mixed number fractions. Okay, so let's look at the next part. The next part, we are solving for x. Sorry, it's taking me a second. Here we go. We're solving for x. We have a proportion. Now, um, in proportions, what we're going to do is, you've got two methods to do this. I'm going to go ahead and do it as an equation. Okay, when you have a proportion equal to another proportion, you can cross multiply and set them equal. So I can take 12 times x, which becomes 12x, and 4 times 18, which I don't know that off the top of my head, so let's do 4 times 18. That gives me 72. And then I've got 12x equals 72. I can divide both sides by 12. So x is equal to 6. Okay, that's one method. Okay, the second method is this. I'm just going to compare. Okay, I can say 4 times what gives me 12? Well, 4 times 3 gives me 12. x times 3 would have to give me 18. So what number times 3 would give me 18? x would have to be 6. So that's more just common logic that you can figure those out. So you can use either method. Okay, now let's let, look at a unit rate problem. So unit rate problem is where, when you're always comparing to one unit of something. So let's look at this one. What is the unit rate for a six foot wire that costs $1.26. So I am I'm gonna make this into a proportion. For $1.26, I get six feet of wire. Well, what if I want one foot of wire? How much is my unit? So what does one foot cost me? Well, what have I done? I'm taking six 
and I'm dividing it by six to get one. So I've divided my denominator by six, which means I need to divide my numerator by six. So let's take a dollar 26, whoops, 126 and divide it by six. And that gives me 21 cents. So that would be 0.21 dollars. So 0.21 dollars is the same thing as 22 cents. So that is my unit rate. So 21 cents is for one unit or one foot of wire. Okay, let's try a second unit rate problem. What is the unit rate, unit rate meaning one, for eight feet of wire that costs $1.52? So I'm gonna, again, set up my proportion. I have $1.52 on top, and I have eight feet on the bottom. I want to know the cost of one foot, because that is one unit. Okay, so what have I done? I've taken eight feet and I've divided by eight, so I'm gonna take $1.52 and I'm gonna divide it by eight. So let's, let's take $1.52 divided by eight, and we see that is 0.19, which is 19 cents. So 0.19 is in dollars, and that would represent 19 cents. So that's my unit rate. So let's see what our next concept is. Okay, another concept in seventh grade is miles per hour. So let's read the problem slowly. If Joey rode three and a half miles in an hour, what is his average speed in miles per hour? Well, if he's covered three and a half miles, if he's going the speed of three and a half miles in an hour, then his average speed is 3.5 miles per hour. I'm going to change that up. What if it said if Joey rode three and a half miles in half an hour? That means in one hour, he would go twice as far. So that would be seven miles per hour. So you're just looking at how far they're traveling in one hour, which is like your unit rate. Okay, now let's look at some percent problems. Okay, percent problems, I kind of stick with the same format. I like to use is over of equals percent over 100. And if you set up all of your proportions like this, then you can use the cross product method and solve it. So 12 is 40% of what number? So 12 is the is part. So 12 is going to go on top of, of what number? That's our unknown. So I'm going to put that on the bottom as X. Now, what's my percent? 40. So I'm going to put 40 over. And on the bottom, we always put a 100. So there's my setup, is over of equals percentage over 100. Now I can use my cross products. So 40 times X is 40 X. 12 times 100 is 1200. When you have 40 times X, to undo that, I'm gonna divide. So I've got four goes into 120 and that's 30 times. So that is what my answer is. So let's read it. 12 is 40% of 30. 12 is 40% of 30. Well, 50% of 30 would be 15 because that's half. It's a little bit less than half and that makes sense. So 30 would be our answer. So let's use the same setup with this one. 36 is what percent? of 48. Okay, so let's think about our is over of equals percent over 100. Okay, 36 is my is, of is my 48, and I don't know this time my percentage. So that's where my unknown is this time. So let's set this up. 36 is on top of 48 is on bottom equals percent, which we don't know, so I'm gonna call that X, 
over 100. Now let's do cross products. 36 times 100 is 3600. 48 times x is 48x. So I'm just going to take 3600 and I'm going to divide it by 48. And the answer is 75. So x is 75%. And again, go back and say, okay, what was my unit I was looking for? I was looking for percentage. So 75%. So that's how you solve the percent problems. Let's try another one of those. This time we've got 62% of what number is 310. Okay, let's think about our setup. Is over of equals percent over 100. So let's see, is 310 what of what number so this time we don't know that that's our unknown x because that's the what but we have our percentage so let's start plugging in okay is is 310 over of which we don't know equals the percent which is 62 over 100 there we go we've got the nice setup now let's use cross products so 310 times 100, that's 310, add two zeros. So that's 31,000 is equal to 62 times x. And to solve that, we would divide by 62, divide by 62. So 3,100 divided by 62, that leaves us with 500. So let's see if that makes common sense. 62% per, of 500 is 310. Yes, because 50% is half, which would be 250. What's well, more than half, it's all, all, way, all the way up to 62%, so more than half of 500 would be 310. So that sounds reasonable, okay? Let's look at this one. What is the percent of change? Okay, this one's always a little tricky. So what you have to do is you've got the value 42 and it's increased all the way up to 62. So how much has it increased? Well, let's take 63 minus 42. It's increased by 21. So the increase is 21. But that's not the percent of increase. So we then take, well, that number, 21, was my increase out of what was the original amount. Well, the original amount, we started at 42. So always take it out of the original on the bottom. So what percent is that? Well, that's just on your calculator. You're going to take 21 divided by 42. And that's just 0.5 or 50%. So 0 0.50, which is 50%. That's the increase. So always find the difference and then put it over the original. Okay, and that's our percent problem. Percent of increase. Okay, and the last couple problems for this section have to do with tipping. So if a dinner costs $15 and 75%, what would a 15% tip be? So in other words, what is 15% of $15 and 75 cents? So you can set up the is over of as percent over 100, but on this one, since we're just taking a percent of a number of in math means to multiply. So I'm just going to take $15.75 and I'm going to multiply it by 15%. But we need to change that to a decimal. So 15 per 100 is 0.15. Just move the decimal two places. So we're going to multiply that by 0.15. So let's go back, get our calculator, 15.75 times 15% and that's $2.36. So that should be the tip.
$2.36. And that's 15% of our bill. Okay, so now let's try another word problem. If a shirt costs $29.50, what would the total cost be including 5% tax? So this time you're not just looking for the tax, you need to pay the tax plus you need to play, pay for the shirt. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. Okay, first let's kind of work it like the previous problem. Let's just figure out what 5% of 2950 is. In other words, what would my tax be? So let's take $29.50 and we need to find 5% of that. So we're going to multiply by 5%. Well, what's five out of a hundred as a percent? That's move the decimal two places. So be careful, it's 0 0.05, not 0 0.5, because 0 0.5 is 50%, but 0 0.05. So let's take 29.50 times 0 0.05, or 5%. And that's a dollar forty-seven five. Well, that five is going to round up. So I'm going to make that a dollar forty-eight because you're going to round up to the next whole number. So that's the tax. Well, you're also purchasing the shirt. So you're going to take the sh price of the shirt and you're going to add to it $1.48. So adding that up, that's eight and nine and zero. That's $30 and 98 cents. So that's one of the ways you can solve that. So that's how much you're going to pay, 5% tax plus the shirt. Now the second method, you can just multiply everything one time. You can take, okay, $29.50, and I need to pay for the shirt and I have to pay the tax. Well, the shirt is going to cost $29.50, so I'm going to multiply it by one, one whole number, the value 100%. 100% of 2950 is 2950 plus 5% tax, which is 0 0.05. So if I take 2950 times one whole number, 100% plus 0 0.05 the tax, I can get the price all at once. 2950 times 1.05. And that gives me $30.975, which rounds up to 98 cents. And I get the same answer. So it's $30.98. But this time I have only had to multiply once. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful.